Hello, welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. So thankful that you're here with me today. If you like this kind of information where we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, mental health and wellness, because we believe it's all connected, then you need to make sure and subscribe. We drop videos every Tuesday and I'd hate for you to miss out on any of the good information. So you can't watch TV or YouTube for that matter without coming across drug company commercials for these new medications. And a lot of these new medications that they're showing commercials for at the moment are medications that we use to treat psoriatic arthritis. But what is psoriatic arthritis? Is it the same thing as rheumatoid arthritis? And how can you tell if you have it? These are all things we're gonna go over today in today's video, so stick around. that most people have heard of rheumatoid arthritis, but not as much people are aware of psoriatic arthritis, aside from maybe what they might hear in these commercials. It's important to know that number one, psoriasis is actually pretty common, and number two, psoriatic arthritis is often overlooked. So it's important to know what to look for, what signs to look for, so that you can make sure your doctor's aware and that things don't fall through the cracks. So we're gonna talk about the six things you need to know about psoriatic arthritis. Number one is it's associated with psoriasis, obviously. But what is psoriasis? Psoriasis is actually pretty common. It is an inflammatory skin condition. It is often red, it can be flaky, and have what we call a scaly type appearance. Now, for all my dermatology peeps out there, I know, <laughs> I know you guys are like shaking and like wagging your finger at me because it is so much more complicated than that. And there are lots of different types of psoriasis. Um, there are different names that go with the different types of psoriasis. I am not a dermatologist. I am aware of the different types. Um, but just to keep things simple, the most common type is going to be a patch of skin that's red. It can be itchy, sometimes not. It can be flaky and it can sometimes have a white sheen to it if there's a lot of flakes. And that's typically what we think of when we think of psoriasis. There are some typical places that it happens on the body. We think of the scalp, specifically where the hairline is. We think of the outside of our elbows, the tops of our knees, but it can also happen behind our ears, on our shins, and on our hands and fingers. Now, we typically say psoriasis can happen really anywhere on the body, but I just named some of the most typical places. Number two, not everyone with psoriasis will develop psoriatic arthritis and vice versa. It's estimated that anywhere between 10 to 30% of patients with psoriasis will go on to develop psoriatic arthritis. But that number might be an underestimation as we as doctors are historically pretty bad at identifying psoriatic arthritis. We have gotten a lot better and as most of the time, um, numbers and research tends to follow our practice. So I think that in the future we'll see research that shows that the association of psoriatic arthritis with psoriasis is probably higher. Unfortunately, there is no way to be able to predict which patients with psoriasis will go on to develop psoriatic arthritis. And so that's why it's so important to know what to look for. Number three, psoriatic arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis. Now, we talked a little bit about inflammatory arthritis in the video where we discussed rheumatoid arthritis versus degenerative arthritis things like osteoarthritis. And if you haven't seen that video and are interested, I'm gonna put the link in the description box below. And psoriatic arthritis is similar to rheumatoid arthritis in that it is also an inflammatory arthritis. So what does that mean? That simply means that your immune system, for reasons that we don't quite understand, has kick-started this inflammatory cascade that is then mostly attacking your joints. I say mostly because obviously with psoriatic arthritis, it also attacks your skin. So that's what I mean about inflammatory arthritis. The joints are hot, they can be a little red, they're very tender, they can feel boggy because they're so swollen. The joints affected with psoriatic arthritis are often the knuckles of the hand, specifically the last knuckle and the knuckle in the middle of your finger. 
They can also affect your low back. And when I say your low back, I'm not necessarily talking about your spine, but more the bottom of your pelvis. You can get swollen knees, swollen ankles, swollen shoulders and elbows with psoriatic arthritis as well. A key sign of psoriatic arthritis is the development of dactylitis. I know it's a really weird, crazy word, but basically what it means is it not just does the knuckle get swollen, but the entire digit can be hot, red, and swollen. It can happen on the fingers and it can happen on the toes. All right, number four, a flare of your psoriatic arthritis does not necessarily correlate with a flare of your psoriasis. So this is really important to understand because oftentimes patients will poo-poo the idea of the possibility that they have psoriatic arthritis because their skin might not actually be much of a problem at the moment. But the two are associated with each other, but they aren't necessarily tied at the hip. Patients have developed psoriatic arthritis even before they've developed the skin disease. So just because you're having a flare of your skin does not necessarily mean your joints will flare. And just because your joints are flaring doesn't necessarily mean your skin has to be flaring. And number five, just like all of my other autoimmune conditions, psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis are influenced by diet and stress. Now, I know I've said this in regards to lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. We kind of famously think of those as getting worse under stress, and psoriatic arthritis is no different. In my experience, in fact, I've actually found psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis to be very influenced by diet. Patients who make maybe small but significant lifestyle changes in their diet, which might include cutting out sugar, cutting out gluten, cutting out all processed foods, incorporating a regular stress management practice. All these things I have seen significantly help patients limit the amount of medication they may need. And number six, the treatment options for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis have exploded in the past five, six, seven years. This is obviously seen um, with all the commercials that we now see. Um, the medications that we now use for all of our inflammatory arthritis, including rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis are what we call biologics. These are medications that were developed specifically to target certain proteins, certain peptides within the inflammation cascade. These medications have revolutionized the way that we treat psor psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. They have limited the amount of steroids that we have to use and they have prevented the joint damage and disability that we oftentimes would see 40 or 50 years ago before we had these medications. Now, a couple things to note. Number one is these biologics, these medications, are very potent immune system modulators. They are working on your immune system and they should be treated with respect. And number two, Figuring out which one of these medications is going to be the one that works for you is a little bit of trial and error and can get pretty frustrating. The positive is that we have so many medications to choose from and it's really opened up the door for a different type of treatment strategy for patients with psoriatic arthritis. The flip side of that is the science just kind of went really fast, so fast in fact, that we haven't been able to find markers or signs that let us as doctors know which medication's going to be the best for which patient. So when you're first starting down the road of deciding what medication might be best for you, there is a little bit of trial and error involved. So those are my top six things you need to know about psoriatic arthritis. There's so much more we could go over. There's always a lot of research being done. The main point I really wanted to press was that psoriatic arthritis is not simply rheumatoid arthritis with a rash. It is its own condition, it has its own pathways, and it has its own associations and pitfalls that we need to be aware of. I hope you've gained a little bit of information, maybe grabbed onto a nugget here and there. I hope you've been inspired to go 
do your own research, look some more stuff up, put together some questions that you might want to ask your own doctor. If you have, I'd love to hear what your doctor said. I'd love to hear your own questions. Feel free to put them down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss any of the videos we have out we have coming out every week. Like I said, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because it is all connected. Thanks and we'll see you next time. Um, I'm having a brain fart.